to my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that this meditation will find you and your family out and about and enjoying one another's company. Our meditation today will be coming from Luke chapter 10, starting at verse 1. And we'll be reading verses 1 through 6. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whether he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into the harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lamb among wolves, carrying neither purse nor scrip nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. Our meditation will be a journey worth taking. Luke is a Gentile and his focus is directed towards Gentiles who are poor, sick, and outcast, and that is why he is known as the beloved physician by Paul. His ministry was to serve the greater good. Saints of God, we have to continue to emphasize that the gospel is for the whole world meaning those who choose to accept Christ as their personal savior. And what we see here in this text is preparation. When we look at taking a journey, our first thought would be what to pack and what spa or activities would I be signing up for while I am on the journey with my family. We might put the Bible in the suitcase with a few other books, but let's be honest with ourselves they possibly might not ever leave the suitcase themselves. We are connected to one another through the shed blood of Christ Jesus. We are sent into the world to win souls for Christ. In our travels, there will be joy, disappointment, struggles, and loved ones who will make their transition from earth to heaven in the Lord. Our main objective is to share the gospel with those who have not yet given their lives to Christ. For it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, I have planted Apollo's water, but God give the increase. The world is filled with hatred and fear. Oftentimes when you turn on the news, you are gripped with the anger and lies from politicians and TV ads that are sometimes misleading. It is so important in times we are living in to stay the course in love, peace, and truth that Christ offers to all who will call on his name and turn to turn their lives over to him. You may have already lived most of your life, but it is God's will. Many of us have several decades to live on this earth before we die and give an account for what we did or what we did not do with our lives. For it says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, 26, then said Jesus unto his disciple, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself or herself and take up their cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and loses his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And also what we see here, my brothers and sisters, is trust. God is a plan for every detail of our lives if we can just stay the course. Whatever you plan to do with your life, make sure it lines up with God's word. It would be profitable for you to spend some time, some quality time, in prayer and fasting. I assure you the outcome will be greater with his answer than yours. While inhaling and exhaling is a natural function in the human body, so should it be in God's word. The journey is sometimes challenging, but the outcome is so much sweeter if you just stay the course. In Deuteronomy 29 verse 5, the Lord said this way, And I have led you 40 years in the wilderness, your clothes are not waxing old upon you, and thy shoes are not waxing old upon thy foot in 40 years in the wilderness. 
God knew that during their journey through the desert, people could not stop at a local shop to pick up a new pair of jeans or shoes. So he made it so that their clothes they wore and the sandals on their feet did not wear out. God so cared for his people that he even preserved their clothes for the journey. We serve a God who continuously calls us again and again, over and over, to recalculate our journey until we get it right, until we are going in the right direction. If you have ever taken a trip using a GPS when you make a wrong turn, it tells you go three blocks, turn left, and at the next light, the expressway is coming up on the left hand side. And it repeats itself until you either make the turn or decide to take another direction. It sometimes will give you an alternate route if you veer off the path. The problem is we stop listening to directions and that which would have taken three hours to turn into six hours. And we would just listen when it is time to recalculate in order to stay on the course and avoid the pitfalls and potholes the world throws at us. We will finish victoriously and our journey will be well worth taking. It may look dark or even pitch black now. Nowhere to turn and no one to turn to. But it was even darker on Calvary when Jesus hung between two thieves on the cross for your sins and mine. And also what we hear see in the text, my brothers and sisters, is victory. There is joy ahead. Do not stop reaching. Do not stop praising his name. Keep on pressing your way even through, even though you have endured many struggles and trials. For it says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I, do, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. We have heard the expression time and time again. You, just, you have just gone through a trial or in the midst of one, or you are about to face one. But either way, hold to God's unchanging hand. It is worth the journey. God bless you.